Oh, man. Oh, my lucky stars. You know who it is. You know what it's time for. I say, oh, my lucky stars, informally, because we're literally talking about astro and stars. No astro students were harmed in the making of any of the dad jokes in this video. They are purely the creation of their terrible sense of humor instructor, which is me in this case. It's uh, Major Cunningham from the Astro Department. You know who it is. And uh, I realized when I first cut the version of this video, I was using uh, a slightly different setup that worked well for some things, but not for others. It was a webcam above a desk, uh, and I was using pen and paper, uh, and the resolution only was so good. So I wanted to uh, cut another video with a different setup that hopefully is easier to see on lower resolution screens, um, which matters when I'm drawing things of different colors with um, the Apple Pencil and, well, just that's what I'm using. But when I'm drawing things of smaller size, um, and I can use different colors easily. So uh, one, and some of these example problems may be the same, and maybe that's actually a good thing uh, from the original video. But uh, without further ado, let's hit some of these box problems and uh, just, just get to getting. So the way these usually go <clears throat> is that you're given on the left here. Let's see if this will work. Ooh, looks good. You're given a list of six COEs, and then over here we tell you, hey, Tell us which of these boxes is true, which applies, if any. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to do this. Some folks swear by the whiz wheel. Um, I personally like to offer an alternative oops, to the whiz wheel. And it's this picture method that uh, I'm going to show you guys right now. I'm actually very excited. So without, again, without further ado, let's begin with this example right here. Okay, so... Some major axis, 8,500 kilometers. You know, that is nice to know. And as a person in the space business, that's actually something I do care about. But I don't really need it for this problem. Okay, next thing. Eccentricity of 0.1. Well, that does tell me something. Uh, an eccentricity of zero would be a circle, but it's not that. So uh, it's not circular. It's uh, an ellipse of some flavor. So what we're going to do here, what, what I like to do for my own reference is cross off things that are not true. And then I'll bubble in things that are true. For example, that thing's not true, but that's what I'll do. Okay, so with eccentricity, that's about all we can tell as far as box problems go. Okay, inclination. So inclination of 45 degrees, that's nice to know. Here's what I would tell you. Here's kind of a what we would say, maybe a rule of thumb. If your inclination is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, between 0 and 90, you have what we call a prograde orbit. If you have an inclination that's exactly 90, that's a very, very special case, and it has to be exactly 90, um, we call that a polar orbit. And by the by, that's the only kind of orbit that's going to go over both the north and the south pole. Okay. Uh, if you have... Uh, in another case, an inclination that's between, not including, but between 90 and 180, you're going to call that retrograde. And so all orbits are going to fall into one of those three categories. And there's something that I would call kind of an asterisk, if you will. It's like some orbits may be, you know, prograde or retrograde and something we call equatorial and you kind of do a check for equatorial. Equatorial includes orbits that are either exactly zero or 180. So you can kind of see like something could be zero degrees, from a little degrees there, and also equatorial, which would mean it have to be exactly zero for that to be the case, or it could be exactly 180, which would mean it'd be retrograde and equatorial. So there you go. Uh, and in our, of course, our case here is uh, inclination is 45 degrees, and we can tell, so it's not, it's not equatorial because that would mean it would be 0, 180. And it is prograde. It does fall between that 0 and 90. So I fill it in like that, making very clear that I intend to fill that box in. Foot stomp, foot stomp. You've got to be clear with what your intentions are. Uh, I know that 45 is not between 90 and 180, so I get that guy gone. And then, of course, it would have to be exactly 90 if we were going to classify it as a polar orbit. Now, as you start to cross things off, 
the neat thing is that things kind of start falling away. So for example, if your orbit is not a polar orbit, in no way could it ever cross the North Pole or the South Pole. It might look askance at it, might look sideways at it as it's sort of orbiting northward, but it's never going to actually touch it. Your spacecraft's never going to fly directly and pass through, you know, the pole, if you will, that is K-hat or negative K-hat, and that would be the South Pole. So what I mean to say is if, if you can rule out that it's not a polar orbit, it will never hit the North Pole and it will never touch the South Pole. And like I just said, the axis that goes through the North Pole and the South Pole is the K-axis, so you kind of get lucky and you can say, I'm going to cross that out too. Because if it's never going to be at the North or South Pole, it's never going to touch K-hat or the K-axis. So, all right, cool. Well, then what else can we tell? I think that's about all we can tell from inclination. Now, let's go to the picture, as I say. That's what I usually say. I say a lot of things, but that's what I usually say about this. Here's what we're going to do. You are going to, at least if you want to use this method, you're going to start off with whatever argument of perigee is, and then you're going to use whatever true anomaly is, and you're going to use those things to tell you about the rest of the orbit, and there may be maybe a need to draw a top view, and uh, I don't think we'll have to do that for this picture, but we will see. Okay. All right, well, let me just execute it and show you what I mean. All right, let's start off with maybe yellow. No? Red. Okay. <laughs> Here's how I draw this picture. It's how I start all these pictures off. By drawing my best circle, which usually resembles an egg, but that's just because I'm not great at drawing. Oh, you know what? The iPad actually makes perfect circles. I forgot about this. Oh, no. Oh, hold on. Well, it's not working for me right now. It's okay. Make your egg or your circle. Draw a dot in the middle. It's going to be the center of your orbit. And then over to the right, which is how I do it. We'll zoom in a little bit here even more. Whoa. And mark my ascending node. And, of course, the vector that points towards the ascending node is the nodal vector, n vector. Okay. Well, as I promised, we're going to take however much argument of perigee we have, which is this bad boy right here, and draw it out for ourselves. So an argument of perigee of 180, we're going to go, well, that's like 45, that'd be like 90, and then that'd be like 135, that'd be like 180. Cool. Argument of perigee shows us location of perigee. It's literally its only purpose in life. So I mark out that that's perigee. Then from there, we're going to use however much true anomaly we have to mark out the satellite's location. Now, if we had, you know, a true anomaly that was not zero, we would just proceed from perigee and mark out the satellite's location. Now, in this very special case, which happens to be the first example problem, the satellite has a true anomaly of zero, which means it's right on top of perigee. So, in that case, I literally draw a picture of the satellite itself to help me know that it is indeed at wherever I say it is. Okay, so now we go back up to our boxes to see what else we can cross off. Um, something that hits me right off the bat is 180 degrees away from the ascending node. We know we have this thing called the descending node. So it's not a necessary part of the picture, but it does tell me that... So our satellite is directly across from the ascending node in this case. So that means I can, I can mark out ascending node, or I can rather mark it. And I can get rid of a descending node, rather, sorry, descending node, because I can't also be at the ascending node at the same time as I'm at the descending node, so I can cross that out. A uh, cool thing here also is that we are directly on top of perigee, so I can mark that we are at perigee. How do I know that? From our picture. All right. And then I can mark out that I'm not at apogee, because if I was at apogee, I couldn't also be at perigee at the same time. Okay, so now, so now, I have a couple more things to rule out, and this is where I need a top view. Let's go purple, because that's what we should do. Sometimes you need a top view. If you haven't been able to rule out everything, then you need a top view. So what I do is I draw as another egg, as if I was literally on top of the earth, 
There's my polar ice cap. There's kind of K-hat coming out of the page at me. I draw myself an I-hat. And draw myself a J-hat. Because that's what it would look like if I was looking down at it from the top. So, the reason I have to do this is because I am at the equator. How do I know that in this picture? In this red picture right here. Well, I know that because I am at the descending node. We established that with the picture. That means I'm literally touching the equatorial plane right now. That means it's possible I could be touching the I-hat and the J-hat axis because, as you guys see from looking down at it from the top, it's certainly uh, the I and the J-hat are trapped in the equatorial plane, um, kind of like you know if you could just draw a huge napkin out from the <laughs> from the equator or a piece of paper that extended to infinity that sliced the Earth in half through the equator. I and J-hat are trapped in that napkin or that piece of paper. So. Um, because I'm at a node, at the descending node or the ascending node, which is where, how do I put this? This is, the ascending node and descending node are in the equatorial plane, but you could have an ascending node that's, you know, over here, over here, over here. Doesn't matter. They're all trapped in the equatorial plane somewhere. What we're trying to rule out is the special case of it being right on top of one of these axes. Or, as a quick side note, remember, their negative axes counterparts also count. So for example, if my ascending node was over here, that would still count as J axis because it's on the negative side of the J axis. Okay. So let's see what our situation says. It says we have, this is where, and again, this is where we use RAN. You don't always need RAN for these box problems, but in this case we do. RAN's gonna tell us from the top view where is the ascending node. So, as we remember from our previous lessons, we start at I hat, which points towards the first point of Aries on the vernal equinox. Start at I hat, we measure around to wherever the ascending node is. Now, in this case, again, we've got a zero there, which means, again, if we had, let me put this way, if we had, you know, a non-zero RAN value, we would go counterclockwise around the equator from I have. We don't have that. We have another very special case. Ran is zero. Meaning, the ascending node is right on top of I hat. Not only that, our satellite from the previous picture we saw is at the descending node. So the ascending node's right here. That's nice. But what we know is that the descending node is 180 degrees away on the other side. And that's where our satellite is right now. So from the top view, we have guaranteed and found out that the satellite is on top of negative i-hat, if you will, which still counts as i-hat. Whew! So, and the reason I use all these colors is to try and keep everything straight. So negative i-hat still counts as i-hat. So I get to fill that in. And you can clearly see it's not on j-hat. It's pretty far away from j-hat, so... After all that pain, we have discovered, of course, we've used all our variables, and that's good. We discovered we have a prograde orbit. The spacecraft at this moment is on the I-hat axis at the, oops, oh, I, um, I marked, I marked something wrong. Sorry. Got lost in myself. Our picture indicates we're at the descending node. We can't be at the ascending node. But all that to say... Our descending node, which is, let's see, up here. That's where our satellite is at this moment. And that happens to be on top of perigee. So I'll correct that video. In post, as they say. In post and editing. All right, let's try another one. All righty. I want to try this one next. What color are we? Oh, we're red. That sounds good. Okay, this orbit is... 7,000 kilometers big. So A of centimeter axis tells us how big the orbit is. And for box problems, it does not tell me very much. I don't want to say that. It doesn't tell me anything. I'm going to cross it out. Okay, E of 0.4. Mm. So to color in the circular box, let me get rid of my iPad. No, I'll leave it up there. Okay. So to get rid of the, or color in the circular box, 
we had the color in the circular box, we'd have to have an eccentricity of zero. We don't have that. Anything other than zero means we're not a circle. I'm going to cross you out. Thanks, eccentricity. Ooh, inclination of 90. All right, well, you guys remember from what I was just talking about that if you have an inclination of 90 and exactly 90, which it is here, ooh, we know it's a polar orbit. Now, polar orbits are unique. They have no element of their motion that is either with or against the Earth's motion. So it kind of kills prograde and it kills retrograde. Not only that, equatorial, the asterisk, if you will, the afterthought, is something we always check, but it would have to be 0 or 180, the inclination, to mark equatorial. So equatorial got killed off too. Rest in peace. We're going to come back to RAN. Like I said, you only really need RAN if you can't rule out everything else from the picture. So let's go to the picture. Here we go. Oh, that is a beautiful egg. As always, we're going to set up our picture the same way. Draw your... Oh, hey, now it's actually drawing exact lines for me. Oh, look at that straight line. That is gorgeous. That's the nodal vector. And it's pointing towards the... It's any note. Okay, setup complete. Now, let's look at argument of perigee. Hmm, wow, we have like 350, 315 degrees worth of argument of perigee. Okay, so starting at the ascending node. Ooh, that would be like 90, despite my egg shape. I'm meant to be a circle. That's like 180. That's like 270. Almost all the way back to ascending node. That would be 315. And argument of perigee, of course, tells us where perigee is. And that's pretty neat. So, from there, we're going to mark out True Anomaly, which will take us all the way to our satellite's location. Okay, so that's like 45 degrees, and there's the rest of the 90. I accidentally drew my satellite in the boxes here, <laughs> but that's okay. So, our satellite is pretty much directly on top of the orbit. Now... When I draw my bespoke egg, oh, there we go, perfect circle. When I'm drawing these for you, what we're looking at is the orbit edge on. So what do I mean by that? Well, I mean, or not edge on, but perpendicularly, basically. So let's say your face was attached to the end of a pencil that I stuck through the center of the orbit. And your face is looking down <laughs> at this orbit... Oh, just a funny analogy, I'm sorry. Uh, and it's looking straight at the orbit, not at the side of the Earth. So it's not like the it's not as if the equator is right here. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what this is meant to display. What it is meant to display is the orbit as if your face was looking perpendicularly down at the orbit. So that orbit can be tilted any which way. Your face is still going to be attached to that pencil looking down perpendicularly at the orbit. Okay, having said that, let's keep pressing. So, in this unique case, because we have a polar orbit, our spacecraft could be at the North Pole or the South Pole, or it could be on the K-axis. Having a polar orbit, it opens up the, what would you say, the possibility of those things. But as I kind of draw my dotted line here, most of a satellite's orbit is not spent literally at the North Pole or the South Pole. It's spent in between those, but whenever it crosses the north or south pole, at the same time you are crossing the k-axis. So those are really joined at the hip. So anyway, at this point, what did our picture tell us? Well, it looks like it's pretty much right on top of the north pole. Because remember, here's our center of our Earth, which is also the center of the orbit, um, essentially. And our satellite is hovering right above, you know, basically perpendicular to the nodal vector. Okay. What does that tell us? Well, it means right now our satellite is up at the North Pole. Santa's house. Spying on Santa. A lot of elves making toys. Just saying. Now, if we're up at the North Pole, there's no way to be at the South Pole at the same time, so we can cross that out. And if we hit either of the poles, we know we get to mark K-hat as well. Oh, and by the way, if we're on K-axis, there's no way we can be on I or J. 
so we don't need a top view. We're not going to really need RAM. Things start really falling away. And also, are we at the ascending node? No. Are we at the descending node? No. Our picture tells us that, so we have to cross those out. And are we at perigee? Well, we'd have to be here if we were going to be at perigee. And we are far away from perigee, so we are not at perigee. And, 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 per apogee, rather, would be on the other side here. So we know we're also not at, oop, come here, apogee. So with all this pain, what do we discover? Well, we discovered that we are in a polar orbit, and at this moment, our spacecraft has is hovering, not hovering, hovering is the wrong word, is basically in this snapshot of time, it's touching the North Pole, which is also the K-hat axis, right? The K-hat axis blasts through the North Pole and keeps going so, neat. All right. Well, as much fun as that was, I think we should do another one. Oh, yeah. It's about to happen. Here it goes. All right. Okay. You guys are hopefully starting to get the, the hang of it. What does some major axis tell me? Nothing. Eccentricity of 0.7. Again, in this case, not a circle. It would have to be... E would have to be zero if we were in a circular orbit. Now... Equatorial, prograde, retrograde, polar. Okay, so here's a way of thinking about it. E tells us if we're circular or not. I tells us those four things. And then for the rest of the things, we have to use the picture in this method. So inclination of 63.4, you guys remember, going up to kind of how I wrote it. We've got an inclination between 0 and 90 in this case, so that's going to trigger us to be prograde. So we need to fill in pro. It's not exactly zero or 180, so we get to cross off equatorial. If it's prograde, it can't also be retrograde, so we can cross that off. And it would have to be exactly 90 for it to be polar, so we can cross that off too. If it's not polar, remember, North Pole is not a possibility for our spacecraft's location, S slash C meaning spacecrafts, South Pole, is not a possibility. And if neither of the poles is a possibility, then the K-hat axis is also not a possibility. So, man, a lot of stuff just dropped. But that's as much as we can tell from the COEs uh, as far as just marking them off. Now we got to go to the picture. Now, let's see. Perfect circle. Come on, iPad, detect it. Well, whatever. Draw our thing in the middle. Nodal vector. Mark the ascending node. Setup is complete. Okay. How much argument of perigee do we have? We have 270. Okay, starting at the ascending node. There's like 90, 180. And down around to 270. What does argument of perigee tell us? Remember what your COEs are telling you. In this case, it's telling us where perigee is. Okay. Now, starting there, we get to use True Anomaly to mark out where our satellite's location is. So continuing around, True Anomaly is 90. So huh, that brings us right back to the ascending node. As always, I'm going to draw my satellite picture wherever the satellite actually is. Let's see what this tells us now. All righty. Are we at ascending node or descending node? Yep. We literally just drew our satellite on top of the ascending node because that's where we ended up. We're not at the descending node because we're literally at the ascending node right now. Can't be in two places at once, as all cadets know, despite how, my, how we might want to be. But Okay, and are we at perigee? Well, if the satellite was down here, we'd be at perigee. If it was up here, we'd be at apogee, but we're in neither of those places, so we can cross those off. Now, like I said before, if we're at a node, ascending node or descending node, which we are, We've got to draw a top view to rule out the possibility of being on I-axis or J-axis. So, I like drawing the top view because I like drawing my polar ice caps at the top here. So that's K-hat coming out of the page at you. There's the ice, the polar ice caps. And then draw my I-hat down here. Draw my J hat over here. 
And starting at i-hat, going counterclockwise, we're gonna draw ourselves however much ran we have, and that's gonna tell us where the ascending node is. Oh, it looks like we have 90 degrees of ran. So starting at i-hat, going counterclockwise. That'll tell us where the ascending node is from the top view. Again, this is the top view. Oops, stay purple. This is where the ascending node is looking at it from the top. What I'm trying to get at with this is the ascending node could be, like I said, could be anywhere around here along the equator, but it's a very special case for it to be on the equator and on J or and on I, etc. I say etc. either I or J. We've got to rule that out because we've got to, you know, tick those boxes correctly. So if the ascending node is right there where I marked it in purple, right here, and our satellite, we already determined from the previous picture, is right here, at the ascending node, well, that's why these pictures are so helpful. Looks like we are literally on the J axis. You know what that means, if we're on one of these axes, it rules out all of the others. So after all this, we've determined we have a prograde orbit and the spacecraft at this moment is on the J-axis and that happens to be also the location of the ascending node. All right, let's do another one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, undefined things. So, let's jump into it. A of 7,000, who cares? Doesn't tell me anything. E of zero. Oh man, we haven't been able to tick this box yet. But an E of exactly zero means it's a circular orbit. Oh man, this is going to cause some interesting things. I of 98, 98 degrees. Okay, well, anything that's between 90 and 180, you guys know, it's retrograde. If it's retrograde, it can't also be prograde. And remember, for it to be equatorial, it would have to be 0 or 180. So since it's not that, we get to cross that off. And for a polar orbit, like we had a couple of problems ago, it would have to be exactly 90. We don't have that case either. And if we don't have polar, that means it can never fly over the north or south pole in this particular orbit, which also means it will never touch the k-axis. All right, that's about as much as we can tell. From just looking at the numbers, let's go to the picture. Ooh, there's a perfect circle. Draw my little dot in the middle. Cool. Ooh, that's better. I'm learning how to do this better. Mm -hmm. There's a sending node, and of course the nodal vector is what points at it. So... Let's try and do what we did before, which is use argument of perigee. But lo and behold, we have no argument of perigee. Why? Well, because our eccentricity is zero. With a circle, every part of the orbit is equally close and equally far away. So our a perigee and apogee don't make any sense. We don't have a perigee. Which means we can't very well measure our satellite's location starting at perigee. That's why true anomaly is undefined. So we've got to use this little u, which is essentially a replacement for those. And you guys know from the lecture, we call that argument of latitude, that little lowercase u. Oh, it's cute. And it's a replacement, essentially, for perigee, kind of, because there is no perigee, we've got to use something different to mark out where our spacecraft is. So we're going to start at the ascending node. We do have a node, because our orbit is tilted, right? So we know it's it's not an equatorial orbit, but best we can do is start a sending node and measure around, like we did before, to where our satellite's location is. Wonder what happens if I hold that. Oh, I'm gonna undo that. I appreciate iPad trying to do the right thing, but we went straight from the ascending node right to where our spacecraft was, because usually, remember, we would be measuring around, you know, some argument of perigee, and it would, we'd have a perigee, and from that perigee, well, we could keep going around, we can mark out where our satellite is, and we'd draw the satellite, and actually it would be a very 
happy satellite getting solar power, right? Because that's what satellites do. But none of that's the case here. We don't have a perigee because we have a circle. That's a sad day, but it's also a happy day because we're still able to locate our happy satellite. We use an alternate method, the argument of latitude. So, okay, let's actually analyze what this is telling us. Looks like we're on the opposite side of the ascending node. So that's going to mean we are at currently the descending node. If we're at descending, we can't be at ascending. And let's see, as far as perigee and apogee, this is kind of tricky in a way, but if I don't have a perigee or an apogee because of a circle, which is the case here, then I don't have a perigee or an apogee. I can't be at space, a spacecraft can't be at perigee or apogee. So you know what's coming next. Because we're at a node and we are, we have to draw our top view to rule out th these two. Got to see which of those, if either, is true. So up comes our top view. Cool. Oh, nice. Polarized cap. K-hat coming out of the page at you. This is your setup for the top view. Okay. So remember, the top view is for using RAN. That's what we're using the top view for. And RAN helps us rule out, if we're at a node, which we are, and if we're at a node, that's the only reason why we'd have to rule out I and J, right? Because unless the spacecraft's at a node, ascending or descending, you don't have the possibility of being on I hat or J hat. But since we're in that situation, let's do it. Okay, so starting at I hat, going counterclockwise, measure out how much RAN we have. There's 90 degrees. And then I keep going around. How much do I have left? 45. Oops. Let's draw that better. There we go. There's 45, giving us a total ran of 135, as is given to us in the problem. So from the top view, our ascending node is, hmm, it's, on, it's obviously trapped in the equatorial plane because that's what nodes are, that's definitional. But it doesn't look like it's on positive I or negative I. It doesn't look like it's on positive J or negative J. Huh. Well, Looks like we get to rule out I and J. So in the end, we have an orbit that's circular. It's retrograde, and it's at the descending node. This is a special case uh, because, obviously, it's a circle, and that eliminated our perigee or apogee. So that made measuring the satellite's location a little bit more challenging. We had to use an alternate COE. All right, let's keep pressing on. Oh, here's a good example. Nothing's undefined, so this looks kind of vanilla, but practice is practice. Practice makes perfect, so let's do it. What does some image axis tell us? Nothing. Not for a box problem. E of 0.4 tells us mm, it's not a circle because the previous problem, well, it had an eccentricity of zero. We marked circular. Uh, in this case, that's not the case. So inclination, what can we tell? Mm, this inclination is between zero and 90, so we know it's prograde. It's not 0 or 180, so we can't mark equatorial. It's not between 90 and 180, so we can't do retrograde. And it's not exactly 90, so we can't do polar. And, 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 it, we're always lucky if we don't have polar orbit, because if it's not polar, it's never going to fly over the North and South Pole. And if it's never going to fly over the North and South Pole, it will never touch the K-axis. All right. So that leads us to our picture. Let's draw the picture. Same way every time as far as setup goes. Got my circle. There we go. My nodal vector pointing out towards the ascending node. And then I take however much argument of perigee I have and I draw that around. Looks like about 180's worth there. <laughs> Remember, that tells us where perigee is. And starting at perigee, we get to mark out where our satellite's location is. But again, we have this special example where true anomaly happens to be 
zero, which means the satellite's location is right on top of perigee. The reason I know that is because True Anomaly starts at perigee and goes around to where the satellite's actual location is in the orbit. So this is kind of like a problem we had before. That's okay. Repetition's good. All right, so what else can we tell? Yeah, well, we're 180 degrees away from the ascending node. So we're at the descending node. And we're not the ascending node. We are literally on perigee again. This is kind of similar to the previous one. And since we're at perigee, we can't also be at apogee at the same time. Only one can be true at the same time. Okay, now you know what it is. Because we're on a node, we're at the descending node, we've got to draw our top view. <laughs> My ice sheet keeps changing every time. But it's just like that. In my drawings. Okay, our top view setup is complete. We gave ourselves the top view and some, I mean, we could draw continents and stuff too, but my continents look like peanuts usually, so I'm not going to do that. And starting at I-hat, drawing around to where J-hat is, that's going to tell us where the ascending node is from the top view. And lo and behold, our ascending node is once again on top of J-hat. From our previous picture, we saw that the satellite is actually out at the descending node. Which means, you know, um, negative j-hat still counts as j-hat. So we get to fill in. We're on the j-axis. And we're not on the i because we can only be on one axis at the same time. Ta-da! We have a prograde orbit. The satellite's currently at the j-axis, which for it is the descending node and is also the location of perigee. I like where these examples are so perfect and specific, but that's usually not the case. I don't want to give you guys that indication. Oh, all right. This is another good example. Some things are undefined. You guys really should not be scared of when things are undefined. They actually make the problem go faster and easier because you're missing, you know, perigee or the ascending node. You have less to deal with. So it's actually a blessing in disguise. So you should treat it that way, in my opinion. All right. Some major axis doesn't tell us anything. E of 0 0.007. Wow, man, that's almost a circle. Yeah, but it's not a circle. It'd have to be exactly, exactly zero. So we, we know it's not. Inclination of zero. All right, we haven't had this yet. So let's run, let's run our numbers and see what inclination is going to tell us. Okay. First of all, is it equatorial? It would have to be zero or 180 for it to be equatorial. And it's exactly zero. So, man, for the first time, we get to mark out equatorial. Also, it's between 0 and 90, including 0, so it is also at the same time prograde. If it's prograde, it cannot also be retrograde. If it's equatorial, you know it can't be polar, but regardless, it would have to be exactly 90 to be polar. Because it's not polar, you know it's coming. We can't be at the South Pole, can't be at the North Pole. We'll never fly over those. Okay, and if we never fly over those poles... We will also never touch the k-axis. All right, so a lot of stuff fell. With an inclination of zero, and I want you guys to follow me on this, all you have is the top view. Or put another way, if you were to draw our normal circle, it doesn't really make sense here. Why is that? Well, my setup, which works... Perfectly, I will say, for every other type of problem doesn't really apply here. Why is that? Well, my setup that I usually use for almost every other type of problem depends on having an ascending node. Inclination of zero means that satellite never rises up above the equator. It never rises or sets, I should say, below the equator. So we're stuck with a top view and a top view only. Very unique case. But the good news is the top view is going to be drawn the same every time. 
Got our polarized cap, got our earth, got our I hat and our J hat 90 degrees apart. Good. Now, when we draw a top view, we would usually have, hopefully, you know, uh, a node that we could work with and we would have a RAN that would tell us how, you know, how far, like we've done before, how far around the equator the ascending node is. But we don't have an ascending node. And what that means is we have to use this thing called longitude of perigee which is basically using the top view looking down to determine where perigee is. We still have a perigee because, like we said, remember, we do have a little bit of a circle going on. Or sorry, whoop, a little bit of an ellipse going on. If we have an ellipse, then we have a perigee and an apogee. The trouble is just trying to establish where that perigee is. So you see this capital pi, right? Looks like little pi with a squiggly on top, but it has the it's bigger and it has the straight shelf on top. That's how you know capital Greek letter pi, it's going to replace our ran in this case. So in the top view, you're going to use longitude of perigee, and it's going to start at I hat, just like ran did. I should always label my top view. And start at I hat and go around. Oh, man. I should probably get rid of the words top view because they're interfering with my picture. Sorry about that. Okay, so using big pi of 180, we start at the principal direction, which is I hat, pointing towards that first point of Aries on the vernal equinox, and we go counterclockwise. I'm going to redraw that because that makes me mad looking at how I drew that. That would be about 90, and there's your 180. It's a little better. So what does this tell us? Well, that tells us where perigee is. So... Using that longitude of perigee, capital Pi, as our replacement. Sometimes you got to do it. All right, now, thankfully, since we have a perigee, we can continue on as normal and use true anomaly to establish our satellite's position. So let's mark out 90 degrees worth of true anomaly. And there is our satellite. So let's see what we can tell. Back to red. Okay, first things first. We don't have an ascending node or a descending node, so we can't be at them. Perigee or apogee? Well, if the satellite was here, it'd be at perigee. If it was over here, it'd be at apogee, but neither of those is true. The satellite's off here in the middle of nowhere, kind of. Looks like it's on the opposite side of positive j-hat, which means negative j-hat, which means, in turn, j-axis, right? Negative j counts as j. If it's on j, it can't also be on i, and we establish that it's not at perigee, it's not at apogee. So, even though it's weird seeing something undefined, don't freak out. It actually makes things quicker. You just use that weird-looking you know, replacement COE as a replacement for whatever's undefined. Generally speaking, that's kind of how I think about it. So having said that, let's press on. You know what? On the heels of that, I'm going to follow with what I like to call the dumpster fire, which is where everything is undefined. Everything is on fire. And uh, it actually is one of the easiest of these box problems to do, believe it or not. And I'm going to show you right now why I think that's true. Okay, so major axis is 15,000. Oh, that's nice. I, oh, oops. My wrist hit it, sorry. So major axis is 15,000. I don't care. It doesn't matter for a box problem. Oh, man. Eccentricity of zero and inclination of zero. Well, okay. Eccentricity of zero means it's exactly circular. Thanks. And inclination of zero means, oh gosh, we got to do our equatorial check. So because it's exactly zero, we know it is indeed equatorial. And it's the kind of equatorial that's prograde because it's zero and between zero and 90. If it's prograde, it can't be retrograde. And inclination is not exactly 90, so we know it's not polar. And you know what's going to fall next because it's not polar. It can't be at the north or the south pole. If it's not going to fly over the poles, it will never touch the k-axis. Okay. Now, again, 
we have a lot of things that are undefined. And the reason is not only is it a perfect circle, but this perfect circle is not tilted as far as the orbit goes at all from the equator. It's on the equator. So we have an equatorial, perfectly circular orbit. That means I'm going to jump to my top view again because that's all I have in this world. Why? Well, drawing the ascending node and descending node setup doesn't make any sense when you don't have an ascending node and a descending node. So you got to jump straight to the top view and hopefully draw a better straight line than I did. Okay. All right. We have set up our problem. We have this little lowercase cursive L, Lima L. It stands for true longitude. And essentially, it replaces both RAN and argument of perigee to allow us to basically start at IHAT and measure counterclockwise around the equator just to find straight up where our satellite is. This is why I say this is a lot easier, because all you have to do, start at IHAT, trace out, there's, oh, you know what, I'm going to do it again. There's 90. And then we keep going around to 180. That's our satellite's location. Man, that is easy compared to having to do, you know, is it on a node? Is it at perigee or apogee? It's like, well, we know none of those things should be true, right? Because it's a circle, we have no perigee or apogee. Because it's equatorial, we have no ascending node to do a descending node. Those things don't exist. All we got to deal with now is I and J. And thankfully... Our picture showed us, our awesome top view shows us we're over on negative I hat, which still counts as, oh man, I keep, my wrist keeps it. Means we're at I hat, negative I hat still counts as I hat. And if we're on I hat, we cannot be on J. Ta-da! We did it! All right, we'll see you guys next time.